Good afternoon, everybody. All right, I hope everybody enjoyed the, uh, the, the final few weeks of Easter while I was in Portugal. Um, today, we're back into ordinary times selling, uh, selling, <laughs> we're always selling something, um, celebrating uh, the Most Holy Trinity today. All right, so we just have a few announcements. Um, our special collection this weekend is for Peter's Pence. This collection funds the ongoing activities of the Holy See and helps the Holy Father reach out to people suffering throughout our world. So just throw it into the regular collection in one of these baskets and make sure it's labeled as Peter's Pence. All right, thanks to everyone who returned their baby bottles this weekend for our Knights of Columbus drive to collect funds for ultrasound machines. If you forgot yours this weekend, please bring it back next weekend. And then speaking of the Knights, the Knights of Columbus this year marks uh, a very important time in the history of this Knights of Columbus Council. It was 60 years ago on June 15, 1964, that our council was chartered by Pope John the 23rd, Council 5586 of the Knights of Columbus at St. Sabina Catholic Parish in Belton. So commemorate this event, Bishop Johnson will be celebrating the 4 p.m. Mass here at St. Sabina on Saturday, June 15th. So I would like us to show the strength of unity by asking all members of our council, their families, to attend this Mass and sit together in the reserved section. Following the Mass, there will be a social dinner, entertainment, and dinner in the gymnasium for adults only. The keynote speaker at the dinner will be our Missouri State Deputy. Tickets are on a first-come, first-served basis, and there's still tickets available. To obtain a ticket for yourself and your spouse, just see Bob Kushan uh, at that table in the back in the gathering space. Okay, um, it is tie and jacket for the men. Um, since this is a one tie, okay, yeah, I just said that. All right, uh, so we have 103 members and we still have space available. The dinner is free, it doesn't cost you anything. And there's a menu back there if you'd like to check it out. All right, so that is June 15th, the bishop will be here, okay? I will just sit over there and look pretty, all right? All right, Vacation Bible School registration forms are available in the back of the church and in the youth office. So sign your kiddos up for a week of underwater adventure at Scuba, where kids will dive into friendship with God. And last, the parish office will be closed on this Monday, Memorial Day, uh, May 27th. So a happy Memorial Day weekend to everybody. All of you that are here uh, is n are not at the lake, so you know you need to start saving your money if you want a lake house, so you <laughs> like the rest of our prisoners that are gone this weekend. All right, um, do we have any birthdays this week? No birthdays. Do we have any anniversaries? Well, I was reminded today that my anniversary is tomorrow. So since the an anniversary of the priesthood, I have nobody to remind me of it except for employees. So I think it was Annika that reminded me today. So tomorrow will be 23 years, I think. Yeah, so. Thank you. We sing together number 566, O oh God Almighty Father, number 566. Please rise.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. My brothers and sisters, in our readings today, Moses directs the people to keep God's statutes and commandments. For those times when we have fallen short of the way of life to which God calls us, let us seek our Lord's mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you hold all the power of heaven and earth. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you call us into glory with you. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. God, our Father, who by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification made known to the human race your wondrous mystery, grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore the unity, powerful in majesty. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Ask now of the days of old, before your time, ever since God created man upon the earth. Ask from one end of the sky to the other. Did anything ever so great happen before? Was it ever heard of? 
Did a people ever hear the voice of God speaking from the midst of fire as you did and live? Or did any God venture to go and take a nation for himself from the midst of another nation by testings, by signs and wonders, by war with strong hand and outstretched arm, and by great terrors, all of which the Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your very eyes. This is why you must now know and fix in your heart that the Lord is God in the heavens above and on earth below, and that there is no other. You must keep his statutes and commandments that I enjoin on you today, that you and your children after you may prosper, and that you may have a long life on the land which the Lord your God is giving you forever. The word of the Lord. Waiting for the Lord. 
a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, for those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received a spirit of adoption through whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If only we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. The eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they all saw him, they worshipped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, today we celebrate the solemnity of the Most Holy Trinity, and so we celebrate the three persons in God, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And we hear in the first reading from the book of Exodus, um, when the, I think it's Exodus or Deuteronomy, um, when uh, Moses is preparing the Israelites into entering into the actual country that would become Israel. He's preparing them after their 40 years in the desert where they were taught um, about God being the one and the only God. Back then, they believed that there was many, many different gods. Monotheism was something that the Jews began to understand in, with Moses when God uh, spoke through the bush to Moses. So God the Father revealed himself in the Old Testament. God the Son, of course, revealed himself in the New Testament, in the Gospels, when Jesus walked on this earth. And then God the Holy Spirit is the gift that Jesus gave to the disciples so that they could understand a little bit better what God's will was for them and for all of us. And so Jesus gave all of us the gift of that Holy Spirit. So we have God the Father, God the Son, and we have the Holy Spirit that guides us in order to know God the Father and God the Son. So it's sometimes it's kind of difficult to understand three persons but only one God. And one of my favorite quotes about how to describe the Trinity is, is from a 12th century or 13th century Dominican 
named Meister Eckhart, who was a German philosopher and mystic. And this is how he described the, uh, the uh, Trinity and the union of the three gods, three persons, one God. He says, when God laughs at the soul, and the soul laughs back at God, the persons of the Trinity are begotten. When the Father laughs at the Son, and the Son laughs back at the Father, that laughter gives pleasure. That pleasure gives joy. And that joy gives love. And that love is the Holy Spirit. So there's a lot of insight into that quote. God sent that spirit so that we could be adopted sons and daughters of God, so that we could live in the freedom of God, so that we can enjoy this life, so that we can experience the pleasure, the joy, and the laughter, and ultimately the love that exists between the three persons. That same love is giving to us. And that same love is why we are here on this earth. That God created us so that we could live within that trinity. So that we could learn to laugh together. So that we can learn to cry together. So that we can learn to grow together. To be brothers and sisters. And to understand that even though we will suffer here on earth, we can still enjoy a lot here on earth. Even though we may cry at times on earth, we may sometimes cry because we're so happy. We may grieve here on earth, but we grieve together. But once we reach eternal life, it's ultimate peace and joy and love. And so on this earth, we're called to continue to practice, continue to grow, continue to try to understand what God wants from me, for you, what God is leading you to. He's leading us all to eternal life. And we all are on our own pace into figuring out what that is. We have the church, we have the mystics, we have the Holy Spirit that helps us to understand. A lot of times we try to make think that everybody needs to understand exactly how we think it should be, and that's when we miss the whole boat, because we don't have all the answers either. In the gospel, when Matthew has written that when Jesus approached them and the all, disciples all saw him, they worshipped him. This is for after his death on the cross when he rose. They all worshipped him, but yet they still doubted because they still needed to receive that Holy Spirit in order to understand all that was taught to them at the Last Supper, all that was taught to them the previous three years in order to go out and preach the good news, to go out and baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit to fulfill that mission that Jesus, that God started ultimately with the chosen people and which grew into being all the Gentiles too. So our mission is to laugh, to live, and to love. And when we do that, we know we are fulfilling this trinity here on earth. We're fulfilling our mission. If we're all sad and constantly upset and mad and miserable, then we're not fulfilling our mission. We have to find balance. We're not happy 100% of the time and we're not sad 100% of the time. But we live within that, trying to find peace, trying to live peacefully, trying to love one another and not being judgmental. So think about this week. How often do you laugh? 
how often do you enjoy? How often do you love? And then ask God, send me a little bit more of that spirit. Not spirits, just spirit. And help me to find that joy that exists between the Father and the Son that we call the Holy Spirit. Together, let us profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God. Fast one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray without fear as a people loved by the Lord who has done mighty deeds for us and who is always with us. For the church, sent to make disciples of all nations, may we teach what Christ has commanded in the gospel of love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all peoples of earth, created in God's image, may we find the way to peace through God's statutes and commandments. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Holy Spirit breathe freshness and renewal among all who are tired, discouraged, and downhearted. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our veterans and those who are serving in the military, especially those who have served in armed conflicts and wars. May they receive God's loving peace and strength. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all gathered here as beloved sons and daughters of God, may we see one another as brothers and sisters and extend respect, empathy, and compassion to all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, May they live forever in the land God has destined for us. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear. God the Father and God the Son and God the Holy Spirit, you call us to draw closer to you and to each other. Hear our prayers that, emboldened by your grace, we might preach the gospel of your love and care to the ends of the earth. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. We sing together number 563, How Wonderful the Three in One, number 563.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Sanctify by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord our God, this oblation of our service, and by it make of us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in the confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity in substance and their equality in majesty. For this is praised by angels and archangels, cherubim too and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day, as with one voice they acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you humbly. We pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, James, our Bishop, the clergy, and all your children. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to each other a sign of Christ's peace.
takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank you.